Water is life in the mountain desert of northern New Mexico. For centuries, people of Taos have managed water for survival. These traditions were expanded upon with the coming of the Acequia irrigation system that came with Spanish and Mexican settlers in the 1600s. For hundreds of years, gravity-fed earthen-lined ditches have connected the people of Taos to the land, food, and culture that is unique to this region of the world. The Taos Soil and Water Conservation District was created in 1941 and is focused on the sustainability of our productive environment for present and future generations. Much of this work has been to assist Asequia communities with irrigation improvement projects through the Asequia Conservation Program. The district consists of all lands within Taos County and therefore many Asequias across the region have enjoyed benefits from their infrastructure improvement assistance. The district does not include the incorporated municipality of the town of Taos, however, so the Asequias that run into the town boundaries have not been assessed nor assisted by the district. Peter Vigil, district manager, was engaged by the town of Taos councilman Fritz Hahn in a request to better understand the condition and needs of the Asequias that remain within the town of Taos. A project was conceived between the district, the town of Taos, and the Youth Conservation Corps to employ a team of young people to learn about Asequia culture and create maps of the condition of the Asequias that run through the town. Ten high school students became part of a Youth Conservation Corps that was hired to carry out the project under the guidance of coordinator Miguel Santisteban and trainers David Gilroy and Enrique Gonzalez. District Manager Peter Vigil addresses the YCC team early on in the project. I'm Peter, and I sort of had an idea to give kids a job that I wanted to help you out. I wanted to teach you about things that I think are important. I'm going to teach you today the Asequia system. This has survived hundreds and hundreds of years. The team learned about the history and importance of Asequias in a class that was accredited by UNM Taos. Dr. Silvia Rodriguez, a local scholar and author about Asequia culture, explained the relevance of Asequias in comparison to other irrigation systems that are found in Spain, Bali, and the Philippines. Asequias belong to a family of local irrigation communities that anthropologists call autonomous irrigation systems that are found all over the world and they have an uncanny resemblance to each other in terms of organizational elements. Uh, and they also are all struggling to survive against many of the same challenges. When you think about the sound of water in a ditch in the desert, which is where we are, that is the cornerstone of civilization. Because without ditches, without the diversion of water, and without the system for creating those ditches, for maintaining those ditches, for allocating, dividing, sharing the water, and somehow getting people to organize in such a way that they can cooperatively keep that going is the cornerstone for the survival of the settlers here. Tony Benson, a respected geologist and rancher with much research and teaching experience, explained the importance of acequias to the hydrology of the valley. What you're looking at in the next six weeks here is the acequia system and this also recharges the groundwater. And that's the important connection I want to talk more about today. Now the recharge of that groundwater, part of it comes out of the acequias under the town of Taos and other areas, primarily due to acequia irrigation in El Prado. This water table has come back up again by 10 or 15 feet. So acequias do recharge the groundwater table. So the real way to save more water is to put more acequia water in the ground, keep it from evaporating. Tony Zamora, a citizen of Taos who remembers an acequia that no longer exists, related the changes he has experienced with Taos and with the acequias. The town actually became a, a, the town of Taos because of its agriculture and its uh, bartering with the Taos Pueblo. A lot of the people within the town would raise their produce and their food and stuff, and they would trade and barter with the, the Taos Pueblo within this valley here within the town. And so that's how the, the town actually became a town with a trade and barter system of agriculture. And so it's, it's really important, a part of the town's history. So I've seen 
a lot of changes throughout the years and a lot of dirt roads and a lot of people just living off the land and relying on their water and grew all their food and raised their chickens and cows and pretty much lived off the land, which I thought was pretty amazing that they could survive like that. And it turns out that they were all really uh, healthy and strong, having uh, good food and really healthy work ethics and maintaining the acequias. And it was a real healthy environment for the people. And so I always knew since I was little how important it was to be able to use our water to be able to survive. It's like our life. It was really awesome to see how well they did. The lessons that Asequia culture provides for resilience during drought and climate extremes were articulated by Dr. Rodriguez. Then there's climate change, which is a whole new ballgame, the Anthropocene. They're on the verge of deciding whether we're in a new geological era, uh, which means man-made or human-engendered climate change across the planet. Pueblo people, other Native American people in the Southwest, and the Spanish Mexicano settlers adapted to drought conditions. Their whole agro-pastoral economy is adaptive to these extremely harsh uh, settings where water is precious, where the sharing of water is precious, and they have all kinds of local practices and knowledges that enable them to sort of weather the worst years, drought comes and goes. Climate change is something we don't really know what it's going to do. The projections are not good. You know, in some places it's going to be too much water. In some places it's going to be not enough. But that's, and I think, the biggest wolf at the door for the long-range survival of small-scale irrigation communities and acequias. After several days of classroom education, the team was then trained in geographic information systems so that they could create maps and identify problem areas along the acequias that run through the town of Taos. The team was then ready to walk almost 20 miles along 12 acequias within the town. Along the way, they battled allergies, noxious weeds, and even hostile animals. This area right here has got a lot of prairie dogs, so watch where you step. You don't want to call 911, you know. Jason, Youth Conservation Corps member, shares. And we walked for like eight or more hours, pretty much straight. That was surprising. No one died, <laughs> so that's good. Youth Conservation Corps member, Leaf shares. I found it incredible how much work we managed to get done in a day and that we achieved so much more than we did by like really pushing ourselves. So I was kind of impressed by what we were capable of. The experience and information gained was incredible as they gathered data and heard personal accounts from those that make Asequia culture possible and depend on its flowing waters. Uh, my name is Vince Martinez. I've been the Mayordomo here in uh, El Molino Asequia for 17 years. This is one of the older Asequias as far as the records go of 1800 and of course it probably went back further than that. My family, like uh, most of the Hispanic people here in Taos, have been here three, four centuries, you know, and we've had the acequias going for that period of time. Uh, we usually have a cleaning date in March, yearly, depending on the weather. We set it up usually in October when we have our year yearly meeting. We've got uh, three commissioners, a chairman, a treasurer, and a secretary, and a mayordomo. Now, the mayordomo is a CEO of the acequias. I don't know if you're aware of that. The team learned about the skill needed to irrigate, as in this account from Mayordomo Vicente Fernandez. You know, it's just not just a matter of opening the head gate and let the water flow and it'll irrigate itself. It takes talent to know how to move the water around. You have your low spots, you have your high spots. It's hard work. It, it is. And it's time consuming. But it's worth it. If you want to grow crops, you want to get back to the traditional ways, that's what you're going to have to do. The team heard stories of how important acequias have been to the generations, such as this account given by Acequia Madre del Sur President Joe Fernandez. Because that's the way they lived. They were all farmers. My grandfather used to live in that house over there. We used to plant all this. I remember cutting alfalfa and corn. He had corn and everything else. He had an orchard over there where my aunt lives. And uh, that's, way, that's all he did all his life. That's the way he raised his children. Uh, to include me as grandson. <laughs> the team documented challenges of maintaining the acequias from loss of easement access to deteriorating infrastructure. President Joe Fernandez and Mayordomo Vicente Fernandez explain. You know, the problem that we have with this acequias is that maintenance has not been done on it for a lot of years. You know, they've been kind of ignored. 
and we have stuff like this, you know, people building right next to the to the acequia. That's one of the things we need to do. We need to educate these people. People have let the acequias go. I mean, they aren't maintained the way they used to be. All the acequias here that I manage, the majority need new head gates, laterals need to be cleaned out. The desawes, the desawes are, are maintained so that your water doesn't flow onto your neighbor's land. Traditionally, the acequias belong to the community. Here in Cañon, from the middle of that ditch, 10 feet to each side is the right of way for the acequia. So if you see the Magarlomo walking through your land, you can't go out there and tell him, hey, you're trespassing, because he's not trespassing. It's a traditional right of way. And it's state law also. The other thing is people put up fences and don't give you access. Every fence has to have an access, a gate for the Magarlomo to go through. We also learned about the challenges of drought from Cipriano Medina, president of Acequia Vigil y Romo. Because, you know, there's no water, basically. We've lost the ditches out here because lack of water and uh, lack of maintenance. So then uh, people have just let the land go because they can't get water to it at this point. There is also the impacts of impairment perceived as drought, as related by Mayordomo of the Spring Ditch. Dave Rael. Back in the early 70s, the town of Taos built a well. And as the years went on, our Asequias delivered less and less and less water to our Asequia. And my dad had this idea, what we need to do is go over there and divert some water from the Asequia to the lateral to the field. Because my dad's worry was, if we don't use this Asequia, we risk losing the Asequia. So we went and diverted all the water from the spring ditch to the agricultural land. The water never got there because there wasn't enough water. So the water would, would start sinking into the ground and the water never got there. So what happened as a result of that effort, we were of the mind that we were in a drought. We never thought that perhaps somebody was impairing our right and the end result will be that we will lose our acequia because of different people impairing us, including the town of Taos. Most surprising were the accounts of disregard for the acequias over the last several decades, as explained by Dr. Rodriguez. Development, urbanization, the spread of cities, water rights transfers out of agriculture to the ski valley, to subdivisions, deleterious policy, ignorant, indifferent, sometimes hostile politicians. They don't realize that a certain policy is going to have you know, an impact 20 years down the line. They don't think, what does that mean? There are a lot of policies that are set up to favor developers, people with money, uh, and who want to urbanize. And confirmed by Councilman Fritton. Not only has the town of Taos paved over ditches, not just the Spring Ditch, but other ditches, the Taos School District has done the same. The Department of Transportation has done the same. This ambivalence by us town leaders to ignore our uh, Asequia tradition has had a profound impact on our agricultural community here in town. Mayordomo Vince Martinez shared his experience with the harsh consequences. Now we've got three dead Asequias that are no longer in use just in this area here. And we used to use that ditch when I was young, you know. I remember we used to have gardens and we used to uh, get the hay, you know, and it was used for agricultural purposes. But they're all gone now. For the acequias that are functioning, we learned about problems and solutions for noxious invasive weeds. Mayordomo Vince Martinez and President John Hall shared some of their experience. I've been here jail my life, you know, and we never had any of this weeds, you know. And I've had a heck of a time keeping my place clean, you know. But if you cut it before it seeds, but you gotta do it over a period of two, three years. We've got a, a scourge of a foxtail in there now. Unless neighbors help each other out with weeds, it's really difficult to control. Most importantly, the YCC team learned about the strength and potential of the surviving acequias. John Hall talks about the growing interest in agricultural production on his acequia. Everything is right for it. And as you can see, all the green from the willows and from the grasses that are here, it's a good growing situation. And once we control the weeds and get in the crops, all we have to do is fight the prairie dogs. We grow grass here. Uh, the next field over grows grass for his cows and uh, his, 
this is cattle. I grow it for my donkeys and my horse. I also uh, sell hay. About an acre or two acres of my property is being used for corn now by a man who's trying to grow corn and, and, and make a, a living off of it for selling it in town. And then further down, most people are just either using it for small gardens or uh, a few hay fields. Joe Fernandez and Tony Zamora related the importance of water. And the thing is, we can't afford to lose our water. I hope you realize that, I hope you understand that, and you take that to heart, because uh, it's hard. It really is nowadays. That ditch up there, pretty dry. The only one that's running is that one down there, and the reason is water's drying up. We had a good snowfall. It looked like we were going to have a good year. Guess what? It warmed up in February, March, and there it went. If we don't protect our water right now, they ain't making it anymore. <laughs> and the thing is, we got to protect what we have. Our water is so much more important than money. How long can you live without water, and how long can you live without money? You know, there's a big difference. You might be lucky to live more than three days without water, but you can live a long time without money, you know, a lot longer than three days. This isn't just a matter that's happening within just our town here. It's a whole world issue, water. It's, it's going to be worth more than oil sometime, you know? It's like it already is. I mean, you figure to go buy a gallon of water isn't that cheap. It's like it's our life. Mayordomo Vicente Fernandez and Tony Zamora expressed the importance of tradition to the continuation of Asequia culture and the benefits of Asequias to a global community. Well, as progress comes in, what happens is a lot of traditions go out the door. You know, the traditional ways shouldn't be changed. Those have been around for hundreds of years. There's some things that do change, you know, change has to happen. It has to happen for us to move forward, but we can't forget our traditions, and that's what the acequias are. So the acequias are the ones that, that keep the traditions alive. All the traditions, the fiestas we have is because of water, the harvest. That's what they, they're meant to do, to celebrate the harvest. And, you know, water is life, and the acequias are our life. That's what keeps our tradition alive. If we were to let them go, no tradition. This is the importance of the whole town. This is our tradition. This is our roots. This is what the people relied on. The YCC members gained an experience that not only increased their understanding of the Asequias in Taos, but generated enthusiasm and hope amongst our Asequia leadership and the community at large. This gratitude is shared by Asequia President Joe Fernandez. And, uh, you know, I'm really glad that you guys are doing this because of the fact that we really don't have a way of knowing where our ditches go through, you know, where the laterals are and everything else. And that's one of the things that I've wanted to do. And I'm glad that you're finally working on it. And, uh, you know, that'll really help not only us, but it'll help the community, the county, everyone. As the team completed each day of data collection, they reflected on their learning experience. As core member Aron relates... I always thought like the sequias were just like drainages from the rain. I never really knew that it was a whole system and I never really knew the importance of it until just recently. It's very surprising to see how bad the sequias can disappear. One sequia will be walking through and a couple feet later it'll be completely filled in and almost gone. So that's pretty surprising to me. Core member Emily also shares her learning. So the thing that I found most interesting was how many people have the ability to use an acequia but don't. And um, I really thought about that for myself. And I realized that I used to think an acequia was a ditch and a, di a ditch is just a ditch. And I didn't know that there was anything more than that. And now I'm actually really interested in the entire system and I kind of want to use the access that I have to my tios, Asequia, and understand that more and how it's actually put into use. All right, uh, something that I learned in the past few days is that it's actually really surprising how many things go on with the Asequias without people who need to know knowing. There's things being built on top of them, and there's places where they're moved, and blocked and people just stop caring about them which is amazing in an awful way they they were once really important and now people are not using them as often which is a real bummer core member nora shares her perspective about the acequia madre del pueblo the largest acequia system in the taos valley it disappeared nobody knew where it was and we needed to talk to someone who knew through memory 
I think just the intricacy of the acechia and how it's really just designed to be a completely functional system from the laterals to the main ditch and the main ditch to the river and just everywhere that it ran it's a huge system that just you know it deserves to be running and um, I think it's a shame that it's not but there's hope for it because there's still evidence that it exists and there's still people that care about it. And core members Brandon and Leaf express their observations as well. Something I've learned these past couple of days is uh, how bad of a state that the Asequias can come into from not being taken care of, and just neglect from not even many years, just how bad of a state they would come into. It really shows how Asequias can be entirely erased if they're not cared for, erased physically as well as from memory. The project concluded with a final presentation given at the annual meeting of the Tau Soil and Water Conservation District. They showed the maps generated and summarized the information gathered to an audience that included many Asequia managers and supporters of the project. Later, the team was invited to present their findings to the Town of Taos Council Chambers, the Taos County, and the 17th Annual Congreso de las Asequias, hosted by the New Mexico Asequia Association. Here is an excerpt from that presentation by core members Emily and Jacob. Hi, I'd like to start off by saying it's great to be here. I never thought I would be part of something this big and important. I'm really glad that I decided to participate in this YCC project because I never truly realized how important Asequias were to this many people, like wow, <laughs> this is a lot of people that really care about water. I guess this is important to me because when I was younger, my great grandpa, he would irrigate all of his apple trees and I never really knew what that meant until recently when I actually learned about acequias and everything involving them. And it was a very important thing to me because it brought me closer to my grandpa. And now I, I realize it brought me closer to all of the people here too, even though we're strangers. I truly understand how big of a community this is and how important it is. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi there, everybody. Um, personally, this project really meant a lot to me because um, I drive past a lot of these ditches every day and I never really realized that they were there, where they go, all that they meant to Taos. I had never known half of the ditches that we did walk for this project were even there around the town. This project really probably meant a lot to the Asequias because a lot of them are getting blocked off and getting filled with trash and just debris. And this project really showed that they're still there, they exist, that we can still do something to fix most of them, that they are not gone. Thank you. A year after the project was completed, an effort to restore the Asequias within the town of Taos has been initiated. Water is flowing through two laterals of Asequia Madre del Pueblo, ditches that have not seen water in several years. An effort to revitalize another Asequia in the town is well underway. As Councilman Fritz Hahn puts it, We can reclaim our ditches, revitalize and restore them and get water going through them again, which then will help our own sustainability, not just with little gardens, but getting the water a little bit further out west, where it really should be going. So. When you have a living, breathing, running acequia, it actually recharges that upper and lower aquifer. There's a sustainability benefit on that level. There's a sustainable uh, effort with the springing up of little vegetable gardens, and then bigger ones as we move further and further out. Our fight is not for your generation. Our fight is for your children's generation. The partnership between the Taos Soil and Water Conservation District, the Town of Taos, and the Youth Conservation Corps exemplifies an effort that turns problems of acequia conservation into multiple solutions that not only identify what needs to be fixed on the ground, but educates the youth and instills pride and hope within the community at large. As a bold first step in working outside the box, the Tau Soil and Water Conservation District remains committed to promoting the wise use of land, water, and natural resources by supporting the Asequia conservation effort. In this way, we can ensure that our most precious resource, water, will remain where it can do the most good, on the land and with the people of Taos County.